Our next guests are two people who like food so much they made a show about it. It's called Chrissy and Dave Dine Out. You want to have a slice of that? Have you been eating anything? I know. Will you please enjoy this one with us? Why oh, am I no. Why am I ever going to eat a pizza that doesn't have smoked mozzarella on it ever again? I mean, mozzarella is great. And then you smoke it on top of it. That's incredible. There's nothing that won't go on. We use it as lube. <laughs> Chrissy and Dave Dine Out premieres Wednesday on Freeform and the next day on Hulu. Please welcome Chrissy Teigen and David Chang. I'm a zaddy. What does you that mean? Such as, we, I was watching you backstage, and I, I, I just, I find you to be a zaddy. Is that good? It's like a hot daddy. Oh, that, yeah. oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> He's always been a zaddy to me. Always. <laughs> Didn't you say I was a saddy, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's very kind of you. You look fantastic, thank you. Dave. You look, you know, fine. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'll take it. You guys, I know you guys are friends, you know, and, and we're all friends. And I wonder, though, because I don't never ask you how you met each other and how you became friends in the first place. We've been friends since before I could even drink. So I was 20 years old when I met you. I'm 38 now. John and I lived across from the Hells Angels in the East Village, and we heard about Momofuku Noodle Bar, and we started just going there as much as possible, three, four times a week. And then I bought your cookbook. And I just fell in love with everything that is David Chang. It was that like the first cookbook that got you into cooking? It was a difficult cookbook. For me, <laughs> it, like when you go to a cookbook and then it says like turn to page 109 for the other recipe and then 110 for this recipe and this recipe. But I felt so accomplished cooking from his book and it was worth it every single time. So if we were not eating at Noodle Bar, we were cooking from your book. Would and Chrissy take advantage of knowing you <laughs> and call for um, details on the cookbook and the recipes in the cookbook? We, she used us almost as her private kitchen as well. <laughs> uh -huh. But they really were uh, some of our first customers, you know, and, and we developed a relationship that way. Yeah, That's... I was scared. Like, I, I would call and be like, duck fat. Like, things were so foreign to me. This was so long ago. And, and they would package it up in like a little chef's cup for me and give me ingredients to make his food with for at home. And it was just That's a very high-end version of can I borrow a cup of <laughs> yeah. sugar? Yeah. <laughs> so you see in the clip, that was um, at the end, my, my wife Molly oh, she's and the best. I joined you guys for dinner at yes. Pizzeria Bianco, mm -hmm. our like favorite pizza place, Chris Bianco's place. And um, we just sat there and ate and we talked. He is such a He's one of the best chefs in the world and makes the best pizza in LA. And the for passion sure. and the you find your, I was Molly so also pregnant, Molly, I do want to apologize for my wife using the word lube on your show. Oh, no. Not, I know oh, that no. it's not I don't know where that came from. I've never heard her use that word. Before. Mozzarella lube. Usually Smoked we mozzarella. use duck fat. Is uh yeah. that actually it would be great, I think. Um, are your kids good eaters? Well, my daughter and John are here. They're in the first row. That's Luna oh, yeah, is yeah. such a... So cute. I always say she never... She goes to The Voice all the time when she sees Daddy work, but she's never really come to see me, so we snatched her up from school and she came to see this. But Luna is the best eater. Luna's amazing. She eats salads, vegetables. Miles has still not had... A vegetable. He is six. Almost. He's never had a vegetable. Never. When I like, we ax He accidentally ate a, a broccoli floret uh, in a fried rice and was so upset about it. But <laughs> what like, about your boys, David? Do they eat? They don't like vegetables either. They don't like vegetables. No. It, and do you try it? It makes me feel so much better because my daughter is nine. She will not eat or even <sighs> barely fr a fruit. We can barely get her to yeah. eat anything. But then hearing that you guys can't do that too, I don't know why it makes me feel better. No, it's a struggle. I've gone on a Zoom call with the school before where they talked about picky eaters and they say that it's the only thing they really have control over at that age. So, and he. It's so funny. They say it. that the kids don't have control, and yet they seem to have control yeah, of over every aspect. Else is just, I every know. minute of our lives. I know. <laughs>
<laughs> I know. So you guys ate. What other restaurants did you eat at? Oh my year? God, Young Vaughn Society for me was Meals such by a. Gannette, yes. Providence. You pick great spots. Yeah. Really incredible spots that opened my world because you know in LA you feel like you can get a vibe or you can get good food, but rarely both. And then when you had sent out the list of our final choices. They were life changing to me. I mean, the stories behind each chef, um, how they survived during the pandemic. I mean, it, it became like an emotional, like big, beautiful thing. For Dave, us. as a chef, I have a question for you. When you send things out, when you know somebody's in the restaurant, like you guys are in the restaurant, you know somebody's there, and you send something out to the table or even whatever they order off the menu, do you check to see if they ate it afterwards? <gasps> Always. Oh, Always. No! I'm Always. glad to hear that because yes. I am. I've been stuffing myself unnecessarily, yes. just for fear that that might be happening. Well, I think there are cameras. Well, that's why chefs love when you come to their restaurants. You're because right. I'm a glutton. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I one time was in Montreal and I had the most Canadian dish I think imaginable, Horse? which was even more <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> the chef's dad shot a moose, and you're not really supposed to serve game, but uh -huh. he served us the moose heart drizzled with maple syrup, and which I didn't want. <laughs> but no one in my group would touch it, and so I ate like three quarters of a moose yeah. heart. I had antlers in the morning. Oh. <laughs> but that would be, would you, know, would you be watching a situation like that? I mean, that's done out of love, right? You, but at the same time, I feel bad. You know, you get eat too much and you want to be a good guest and but you're still wanting them to eat everything so right. yes so i don't know if i did i do good or you bad all you want to see is the effort your other dining companions that avoided it they're blacklisted for <laughs> i see okay <laughs> you ever get paralyzed looking at the menu at a restaurant you really want to eat at i'm the orderer for every table we dine at are you I don't want to be the order, but everyone thinks that I should order, and I don't want that responsibility. Yeah, I like yeah. it. I like I it. I feel that way when I'm with you. I'm like, because usually I'm the orderer, and I'm like, oh, good, Dave's here. He can be <laughs> the orderer. It's too much pressure. Do you feel like I never got that sense from you? I have to act like I've been there before, but I in see. reality, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling good about the decisions. Oh, I, I like it. You seem Thrive very decisive, whatever <laughs> you're faking there. Is there anything the two of you are not on the same page as far as food goes, uh, food-wise. I eat a lot at night in bed. And, I, um, and he disagrees oh. with that, yeah. Well, what do you mean in bed? Like, you're, what time like is it? Like laying on my side, it's 10.30. Usually, like, we'll go up around 8 p.m. And then I wake up at 10.30, ravenous, and John will make me a sandwich or lately quesadillas. Uh, we, like, we'll, we'll pre-cook, like, the fajita business to throw in a quesadilla, but I'm a nighttime eater and it's gotten to the point where I'm so exhausted. Well, and... let me just give you the picture. She's <laughs> sleeping, the bed stand is here, she wakes up and she grabs the sandwich and puts it in her mouth in bed. Yeah, fully asleep. <laughs> well, first of all, how do you know this? <laughs> and I mean, and secondly, Terry Crews just fainted backstage. <laughs> he, he does not approve of it. No, it used to be like nighttime eggs. I would do hard boiled eggs with a little sriracha, just something to pop in my mouth while I'm sleeping. Uh -huh. But yeah, he's become fixated on my nighttime eating habits. And it's gotten really sick because I'm just so physically tired from having so many children that there will be ants that like crawl towards me and my food. Really? And I don't even care anymore. I'm like. I know you guys have a lot of business opportunities. <laughs> Edible pillows, think about it. <laughs> Chrissy and Dave dine out. You can watch it Wednesday. It premieres Wednesday on Freeform, and you can see it the next day on Hulu. Chrissy Teigen and David Chang, everybody will get back. It's Sierra Farrell.